Good morning, my fellow brothers walking the semen retention journey. What is it? Sunday, February 12th, guys. Super Bowl day. That's right. So good morning to my brothers. Listen, uh, happy Sunday. I'm going to be working today. I'll try to watch some of the Super Bowl. Most people will be going to parties and my godly friend didn't invite me anywhere so she's having a party but according but I guess I wasn't invited it's family only so that's okay we're here to talk about 1 Peter 4 living for God so then Christ suffered physical pain you must arm yourselves with the same attitude he had and be ready to suffer too for if you have suffered physically for Christ you have finished you have finished with sin <clears throat> so guys it's saying we're going to have to suffer in the matrix here for a short while is my interpretation verse 2 you won't spend the rest of your lives chasing your own desires, but you will be anxious to do the will of God. So to for me, guys, this when I started the SR journey, I told you I didn't have a lot of temptations. It was easy in a way. It seemed like it was easy. It's harder now. But uh, you have this... You want to do the will of God instead of satisfying yourself. So, verse 3, you have had enough in the past of the evil things that godless people enjoy, their immorality and lust, their feasting and drunkenness and wild parties, and their terrible worship of idols. Guys, when I read it, I have a heavy heart on that verse because that was me in the past and most of people now in today's society wouldn't you agree I mean this stuff's been going on since biblical times so people still are evil today as they were in the past and this describes an ungodly person the evil things that godless people enjoy godless people ungodly godless people the same thing their immorality and lust. So guys, that's immorality and lust is fapping, ejaculating, and fornicating. They're feasting and drunkenness and wild parties. You know what that means, guys? Just eating what they want, getting drunk on drugs and alcohol and having sex and wild parties. I mean, I think back... The wildest parties I've been to were in college days at the uh, fraternity house. And I could tell you some evil deeds that went on in those parties, guys. So this is what you're putting away on your SR journey. You're, do you're not doing that anymore. And verse 2 says you'll be anxious to do the will of God. Verse 4, of course, your former friends are surprised when you no longer plunge into the flood of wild and destructive things they do, so they slander you. Do any of you guys relate to this today? I bet we all have a different experience. I made a video about my church group when I thought they would be receptive to celibacy and semen retention and when it was mentioned to them they didn't like it very much and um, possibly they slandered me behind my back I don't know but anyway guys I'm no longer in that group verse 5 but remember that they will have to face God who will judge everyone both the living and the dead so I will all of us will face God and be judged, guys. Verse 6. That is why the good news was preached to those who are now dead, 
So although they were destined to die like all people, they now live forever with God in the Spirit. The end of the world is coming soon. Therefore, be earnest and disciplined in your prayers. That's a heavy verse, guys. <laughs> the end of the world is coming soon. Now, soon to us might not mean soon in the same context here. So soon to us is next year, next month. But soon in the way this scripture was written could mean a thousand years. So we really don't know. Only God knows. Verse 8. Most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other for love covers a multitude of sins. That's always fascinated me, that, that verse, verse 8. Because... Yes, you're forgiven in Jesus Christ, but there's also an aspect of spirituality here that when you love genuinely, I'm assuming genuinely, it's not fake love, it covers a multitude of sins. That'd be interesting to see what one of these commentators has on that. Let's see if I can open that text commentator uh, menu on the side here. Text commentaries. Guys, we'd have to pick one of these and dig deep and listen to it, so we really don't have time for that. But there are some commentaries by trained theologian Christian leaders. And of course, you could listen to, or you can listen to me make my comments. So guys, this is amazing. 1 Peter 4, it describes our modern-day matrix how we should live when we walk the SR journey, we, we become doing the will of God versus chasing our own desires and we will suffer in this world. It says it, we will, because Christ did and we will too, but it's temporary. So, Verse 9, guys, is where we left off. Cheerfully share your home with those who need a meal or a place to stay. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Guys, none of us are the same. Everyone has these different spiritual gifts. And when we all come together in unity in the body of Christ with Jesus as the Godhead, then... Our unique gifts serve each other, guys. We love and serve each other. We try to recreate that here on earth in church groups where we get us, that's the point of a small group, where you get together and you love and encourage each other and help each other with your spiritual gifts. <clears throat> so... Let's jump down, you know, verse 11, if you want. It talks about the spiritual gifts, you guys. Verse 12 says, "It's Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you were going through as if something strange were happening to you. <laughs> it's kind of a funny, sarcastic verse Peter's writing here. But I don't think he meant to be funny or sarcastic. He's trying to, he's being dead serious, but... <laughs> To me, it's kind of funny because he says, don't be surprised at these fiery, tri fiery trials. That means, you know, difficult, difficult times, guys. You know, whatever, losing money, your job, a breakup, a relationship issue, health problems. Guys, I went to a funeral yesterday. I mean, I'm at the age where people are dying around me. He says, don't be surprised if it's some strange thing because it's normal. Verse 13, he says, instead be very glad for these trials make you partners with Christ in his suffering so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it's revealed to all the world. So his glory is coming to be revealed, but when we suffer, we're glad because it makes us partners because he suffered, partners with Christ. 
So be happy when you are insulted for being a Christian, for then the glorious spirit of God rests upon you. If you suffer, however, it must not be for murder, stealing, making trouble, or prying into other people's affairs. But it is no shame to suffer for being a Christian. Praise God for the privilege of being called by his name. So they're saying when you suffer, it can't be like a consequence of suffering for the sins you've done. It has to be a, a different kind of suffering. Guys, it goes on. I might as well read the rest. There's just three more verses. For the time has come for judgment, and it must begin with God's household. And if judgment begins with us, what terrible fate awaits those who have never obeyed God's good news? Verse 18, and also, if the righteous are barely saved, what will happen to godless sinners? So, if you are suffering in a manner that pleases God, keep on doing what is right and trust your lives to the God who created you, for he will never fail you. Guys, I hope you have a good day. I did uh, have a dinner date with my Christian friend. So maybe I'll make another godly woman video update, but I don't know, maybe not. Maybe I'll just include it in a different video because there's not much to say. But you guys have a good day, and uh, we're going to be watching a little of the Super Bowl. I guess I'm pulling for the underdog, and I think that would be the Chiefs. I usually pick the underdog just because it's more exciting to root, root for an underdog. But uh, the Eagles look great. It should be a good game if Mahoney's is healthy. I think the Chiefs can pull it off. And, you know, again, it's one of those games where no one really knows who's going to win because they're pretty evenly matched with the Eagles having the slight edge. But that doesn't mean anything in football, in sports, guys, because anyone can win. You guys know that. So enjoy the day. One of those days where I... We'll try to watch some football, and God bless you guys. I love you guys. Take care.